Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north, more specifically, near Mount Clemens, Michigan. And even more specifically than that, we are in front of the Anatomy of Death Museum. A museum of, 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 of dark and disturbing topics. I've, I was here a couple years ago, back in 2019, I believe it was, I came by the museum here and I was absolutely blown away. I had been to other death museums before, such as the Museum of Death in Los Angeles, the Museum of Death in New Orleans. But here, at the Anatomy of Death Museum, I think they had the largest amount of human remains, probably the largest amount of human remains on display um, in, in one place, at least that I have seen. Now they have invited me to, to come back here to the Anatomy of Death Museum. They said that they have massively expanded their collection, so I'm excited to see what they've done with the place. Please follow me. Here we are at the Anatomy of Death Museum. Also the laid to rest antiques and oddities. You can see right outside here have some uh, coffins. Of course these would be a sample uh, coffin. They'd have just the corners so you kind of get an idea of what the, uh, the casket looked like. But uh, okay, I think it's time to head inside. Oh look, Wrinkles the Clown. I've heard of Wrinkles, he was a mysterious clown that was appearing around that turned out to be an elaborate hoax. It was a whole thing. It was really, really fascinating. Alright, we're going to head back here behind uh, the body bags. Let's see if we can get our way in here. Oh, look at this. And of course, greeted uh, here by the infamous 12 foot tall Home Depot skeleton. Now, as I mentioned, in my intro, there is a tremendous amount of, uh, of bones here, a tremendous amount of skulls. See, let's see if you guys can help me. Um, help me count how many skulls are in this museum. If you're up to the task, help me keep track and leave a comment in the comment section of uh, how many skulls you've seen in this museum. Just notice the pressed penny there. That's, uh, oh, that's from the Henry Ford Museum. That's pretty cool. Skull here, you can see the, the dental problems that person suffered. A tiny, tiny little skull there. And then back there, see a baby shaving. This was a uh, Gillette safety razor. It says for sale by the National Casket Company. Okay, a lot of questions. Why? Is the casket company sell, selling Gillette razors? I guess they're trying to say they're so safe that a baby could shave with them. Don't give your baby a razor ever, even if you think it's a good, safe razor. This is so fascinating here. Some of these are re really good stories behind them. This skull here was, was you can see the bottom half is missing because the old top here was chopped off with a broadsword, it's a 1600 year old medieval human skull, apparently in a battle with swords, actually chopped, I never want to get chopped in the head with a broadsword. It's a Victorian era human skull there. It's used as like a teaching model. It's got the different like nerves and things made from wax there. See it's uh, rotating so you can get a full look at the inner workings of the skull. The cloaked figure here. At first when I was looking at this I thought it was I thought it was the Zodiac killer but actually that is a Oddfellows uh, 
ceremonial robe. Of course, the Odd Fellows, a secret society that actually would use real skeletons in uh, their uh, ceremonies and their their secret their secret rituals. I think a lot of the skeletons here are from the Odd Fellows because they would keep skeletons, and I think that's you know a lot of the uh, skeletons you know that end up in oddity shops and things like that do come from uh, from odd from the Odd Fellows ceremonies. Of course, with death comes funerals. Here is a 1930s Undertaker's Embalming Kit. Just look at all the tubes and hoses you would put in your body to pump all the chemicals in. It says this was used for in-home funerals. So you wouldn't necessarily send someone to the, uh, to the mortuary to be embalmed. The mortician would come to your house and embalm your loved one right then and there with this portable embalming kit. Down here is a 1940s corpse suit. It says it's split down the back, made by the Undertaker Supply Company. Yeah, so because it, it was difficult to like put clothes on a body. You know, you have to like you have to like put its arms over its head, slide or try to slide the shirt down, but instead they just put a slit in the back so you can kind of wrap the clothes around the deceased person. In addition to the corpse suit, here are some corpse shoes. You can see that they actually have like a stretchy part on the back. You can see these dress shoes here that have the stretchiness on the back there so that uh, you can slide them onto a foot easier, don't have to like untie it and all that. It just makes it easier to, to dress a deceased body. We have a video play here of a, uh, of a human, human, uh, human dissection. I, I, I probably won't show this. So this here is a corpse hanger. It's like clips to a dead person's head and you can hang them up and uh, it's for vertical dissection so yeah just you know, hang hang a dead person uh, by their by their head it's a watercolor made by mafia hitman Henry Hill because he was played by Ray Liotta in the movie Goodfellas I've never actually seen Goodfellas I need to check that out sometime but you can see in the in the painting there they're actually taking something out of a trunk and burying it in a cemetery see the funeral home clock. I've seen this before where different funeral homes will use clocks on their sign. I always kind of interpret it as like a, almost a, a way to say like your time is running out. You can see the different signs here from different funeral homes. And here we have uh, the tools of a coffin salesman. All these tiny miniature coffins these are almost almost adorable but this is what they would use to uh, to show people what uh, coffins would look like so they wouldn't have to drag out the whole giant coffin you can see the model coffin there the padded insides to show people yeah that is incredible yeah this model here shows even shows how the casket is placed there and then lowered into the tomb. Look at this casket right here. It's absolutely massive, heavy duty casket. I guess this is the Bates, Batesville Mono Seal Protective Casket, scientifically protected against rust and corrosion. So you'll know that when you place this in the ground with your loved one in it, they're sealed in there and nothing will ever happen to their dead body. Now this is very, very sad, but also very, uh, very fascinating here. These braids here, you see a single braid in that case, and then two braids in each one of these. These uh, three little girls all died in the same car accident in 1957. So it's after the funeral, all the, uh, they had removed the braids to keep as a memory. This is an Azmat skull, a ceremonial skull by the Azmat tribe of Papua New Guinea. And it was talking here about how this is the tribe that uh, captured and killed Michael Rockefeller. 
and uh, and ate him because they were they were a cannibalistic tribe, which is a story I, I just recently uh, found out about. That's absolutely fascinating. What happened to uh, Michael Rockefeller of the Rockefeller family? The one with the one with all the money. There's another Azmat skull there. And down here we have two Sepik skulls. These are uh, the Sepik people of uh, New Guinea as well. But uh, these are actually, what these are is this is a skull. And they would, after someone would die, they would cut out their skull from their body and then cover it in different items, clay and whatnot, to try to reconstruct uh, their loved one's face on the skull so they could, I guess so they could have them around uh, forever. There's another one here, it's very interesting, where they incorporated like these tusks into the face. There's two more of the sepic skulls. And up here, this is a Naga trophy skull. Nagas were a uh, headhunting tribe uh, out of India. Because headhunting just means, you know, you like uh, you like killing people and you like keeping their heads. It's kind of it's a very very morbid hobby. Down here we have a trepidation skull. This is a real skull, but it was used to demonstrate how to do trepidation, which is the process of drilling holes in your skull to either relieve pressure or release evil spirits, depending on depending on who's doing the procedure, whether or not they're trying to relieve pressure or evil spirits. And it's actually one of the earliest forms of human surgery. They've traced this back to, uh, to cavemen actually doing uh, trepidation on each other. Down there on the floor you see an unused, unused uh, tombstone. I wonder why it wasn't used. And, uh, here we have, like, seen the, the hair, the hair wreaths and the hair saved as a memento of death. And it's a different, kind of a different way to preserve the hair there. You see the hair in the frame. We have another, another one of these uh, braids here. It says this was uh, a woman who died after being struck in the head by a bus. Yikes. Here's the partial remains of a skull. It's in 1915. This uh, this man was run over by a tractor, and the uh, tractor ran over his head and crushed part of his head. Another ancestor skull there, and uh, there we have a teaching skull from France. You can actually see they have the different parts of the skull labeled in French. We have a uh, skull there cut in different pieces to to be an educational tool and this one is to educate you on the muscles in your face it's a real skull but they've overlaid to show how facial muscles work like elastic muscles in the cheeks there this is a carwar skull they place the skull on top of this carved statue as a way to entice the spirit of the deceased back into the skull. Oh, just spotted another skull hiding up there. Here's an embalming machine. You see all the embalming liquid there on the inside with the tube and then the insertion rod right there. This is a baby box and um, this is a uh, Victorian last rites kit. The bottom opens up there with the prayer book and holy water there so that uh, they can perform last rites on a dying person. This American new fluid, 100% pure, is actually an embalming, embalming fluid uh, brand. You can see the exploded skull up there. Not exploded because someone like put a bomb in it or something, but it exploded in a way that shows off all the details of the skull. And down here, there is a skull suffering from hydrocephalus. There's some skull art there. You can see the moss there coming out of the top. There's a skull down there. And then, okay, this, this skull here is from someone who had, uh, someone who had syphilis. 
here, this skeleton here in a display case. And what's interesting is if you look at your reflection in the display case, if you line your body up, you can kind of see where your skeleton would go in your body. Oh, look at there, the skeleton towering over all of us. See the different skulls here prepared in different ways for medical schools. You know, they cut the top there so you can remove the calf of the skull. This one's cut a little differently, cut right down the middle so you can look inside of it. It's an odd fellow's mask. Now odd fellows they love they love creepy clothing, they love secrets, and they love skeletons. Apparently there are times with the Odd Fellows that the skeletons are too hard to find. So when they can't find a real skeleton, they have to make a paper mache skeleton. That's what this is here. And you have a recreated skeleton using paper mache for those lousy times where you just can't find a human skeleton. See the different samples there, the coffin corners. Above it, we have this embalming table. And strewn about on the embalming table is these bones that were used as a uh, teaching tool to show different bone deformities. Each one of these bones has a deformity that's written right on the bone. It says uh, intercapsular fracture of neck. I don't know if that's the neck of the person or the neck of the bone. I think that's getting that's getting that's getting confusing there. This is the Rider's bone, also known as the Extosis adductor magnus fend. I, you know, I don't, I don't know a lot of medical terms. Oh, here's an old amputation showing atrophy. Here's a dead body hoist. Of course, that's very useful because dead bodies are very heavy. They used child rental casket. And that's for, uh, yeah, you could rent a casket where if you couldn't afford one, you could just rent one for the funeral and then use something, you know, less pretty for the actual burial. So just, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of dead kids in there. So all the different embalming chemicals, the amazing collection of old embalming fluids there. You can see over here, they have the skull of a giant. He was seven foot two inches. And now his head really doesn't look like that gigantic. Like it doesn't look like absurdly huge, but you can kind of see like the, the thickness. It just has a th more thickness to it than a normal, uh, a normal skull. Different bits and pieces of, uh, of bone here. This uh, femur here shows a knee replacement. You see the... Uh, a metal knee replacement there at the end. There's a skull that had face cancer. Now this whole section here is brand new. Last time I was here at the museum, it ended right here. So they have opened up this whole section back here. Oh my goodness, they've added, added so much stuff. You can see this skull here. It's a teaching skull, but it has little flaps See a little flap there, shows the inside of the jawbone. This skull here says it suffers from metopic suture syndrome. It says that I guess the front of the skull doesn't seal together quite properly. You can see that seam down the middle. It's more embalming fluid and mortician chemicals, but also some little miniature hearses from various times in history. All this different mortuary equipment. It's a 1920s Undertaker's embalming kit. Here's the 1930s version of that. And then here is a mortician's facial reconstruction kit. I guess people have, uh, you know, injuries to their face. This helps like create pieces that can uh, that can cover those up. Just 
look at this casket here. This was used to ship a Union soldier home from Gettysburg. They were uh, deceased, of course, but you can see inside there's metal. So I guess you put the soldier under the metal and you put ice on top of that to keep uh, the body preserved. You can see here where you can actually look in and see their face. There's also area to put ice. So they put them on ice and ship them back home for the long journey back home. Likewise, this coffin here would be used to ship World War I soldiers home from battle. You can see it seals very tightly to uh, preserve the body. It's a Portuguese coffin used to ship a body back to the United States in the 1950s. That really makes you think about the, the double use of a coffin. We usually think of them as a way to put people in the ground, but they're also a way to ship people back home who are uh, deceased. Here it says real human skull, but I don't see the skull. Oh, there it is. There's the skull. Oh, it's a, just half a skull. So if you're counting how many skulls there are, add a, uh, add a half a skull right now. This embalming table right here, with all these kits, all these embalming kits on it, it's actually used in the movie John Wick 3. It says the uh, museum rented out this uh, this table. You can see the still right there. I've never seen any of the John Wick films. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of people seem to uh, really like those movies. This is a funeral bed right here. This says it would have a, the mesh there to keep flies away from the body because, you know, that would be really disgusting. Flies got to the body and all these little objects here are uh, coffin decorations. The coffin maker would have all these little decorations they could put on your coffin. You know, different uh, things. This is mother there at rest, different ornaments there. Be, you know, depending on what organizations you belong to. But up here is something interesting. These are funeral bulbs. So these are light bulbs that uh, have little symbols in them. So these would be lit up at your funeral to show what uh, organizations you belong to. You can see the little statues in there inside of the light bulbs. It's another child's coffin from the 1860s. Oh my god, that's that's not a child. I don't know who that is. Have a horse-drawn hearse right there. Let's see what it has here in the back. It's got the coffin right there. And then uh, some little model hearses. I guess that's a that's a model of what the horse drawn hearse would look like being pulled by a uh, by horses. It's another horse drawn hearse right here, and you can really see like this museum is just absolutely packed with things. You know, there's different artifacts here underneath the hearse. Almost like every square foot is filled with different things to look at, the different embalming tools down there. Yeah, we have uh, back of the hearse, another coffin there with some photos of uh, horse-drawn hearses. Another odd fellow skeleton with uh, one of their creepy looking Helmets there, man. Those odd fellows. I don't, I don't, I don't know what to feel about them. Another odd fellows <laughs> skeleton here. But what's interesting about this one? It looks like it has like light bulbs inside the coffin. So I don't know if they'd like light up the inside of the coffin during their rituals. I don't know. Has anyone ever been to one of these rituals? What do they actually do with? The skeleton. Is there some footage somewhere? I know it's a secret society, so they probably try to hide that stuff, but I'm really curious of what actually goes on during one of these skeleton ceremonies they do. This is really fascinating to me. This is a mold to be used to create prosthetics to be placed on human faces during the during the, the, the funeral to you know you know embalm the person and you know they could have a facial injury or something like that that needs fixing. So you can see, actually you can see the clay like still stuck on there where someone would sort of make 
a, a prosthetic or a piece to cover up cover up a face. Again, I have a lot of respect uh, for the, the, the funeral industry and what, and what they do to uh, to help uh, help people grieve. Yeah, down there you can see the mold there has the the, the putty on it to try to make uh, make a prosthetic. There's another one of these skulls that has like the little flaps that open up so you can see inside of the bone. And this is the skull of a Buddhist monk used to eat and drink out of. So I don't know why they had their heads converted into uh, into cups and plates, but uh, yeah, I guess it's good thing. I guess there's worse ways to, for your for your remains to uh, to spend the days after you're gone. Looking at this old coffin here, you can see the actual actually stuffed with straw on the inside there. It's the jawbone of a mummy. It says this is a Greco-Roman era mummy. It says it came out of an old Niagara Falls Museum mummy exhibit. Oh, I'll be curious on what uh, what exhibit that was. That skull there, but uh, this skull is out for cleaning. What is important to keep your skulls clean? Here we have the old Vincent Price shrunken apple sculpture kit. I actually own uh, own that. I actually did a, I order, ordered one off eBay, and I actually did a video where I made the shrunken head apple sculptures, and no one watched the video. So go watch the video. This coffin here filled with bones, and you can see some of the bones here containing. Uh, Replacement parts. That's a hip replacement, right there. Yeah, all these bones have hip replacements. This poor little skull right here was used in a dental school to show the damages of periodontal disease. That's why you need to brush your teeth, kids, because you don't want uh, your skull to be used in a dental school to be to be an example of what not to do with all this death looming around us. We have the Grim Reaper here, waiting for us all. Here's an actual skull inside of an embalming machine. We have the sarcophagus there, the coffins of the ancient world. And here is a pretty banged up skull there used to show off uh, skull trauma. Another child's coffin. Again, they would uh, just use them for the display primarily and then bury them in a cheaper box. And there is a picture of the last child that uh, had a funeral in this coffin. That's really sad. There's a styrofoam child's coffin. And if that's not sad enough, they apparently called it an Eterna crib. Now, this here, this could be the of all these very sad items this this uh, this one affects me this is a child's embalming table the small small table here but um, of course they have the holes in it you put ice under it to keep the body uh, fresh but unfortunately this one they had some issues with freshness because you can see there is a stain on this table in the shape of the body. You can see the legs, the feet, the shoulders, the head, the complete outline stained onto the wood of this table. The skeleton here was found in a box at a doctor's estate sale and uh, apparently missing its, missing his head. Yeah, I must say, I do believe this museum has the most skeletons I have ever seen and each one of them is super Spooky. And here we exit through the gift shop, which is actually an oddities shop here. They have a lot of stuff for sale. The, uh, the deer hands there to hold your gun. And uh, look at these Ouija boards. This is actually a light up Ouija board. You press down on it, it actually lights up. You can see the little purple there. If it was dark, it would light up the uh, the letter or number there. That's pretty fun. A 
up here, you can see the bubble blowing monkey. Oh, look at him. You already have a little bubble. And look at this. You can actually go home with a human skull. If some human skulls for sale. It's $900 with no jaw. It's a, it's a pretty good price for a, for a human skull. Yeah, take home some fun in jars. Teeth there. Big old kudu there for sale. Got the baby there. Bare knuckle boxer. Super, super creepy mask. And look over here. It's like a little salamander. They are uh, laying on some uh, little uh, little pillows. All right. So yes, what are the absolute most amazing collections of funeral items and skulls. And the owner, Todd, gave me some very generous gifts. I was not expecting this, but uh, this here, this is a, a trocar. This is used in the embalming process. He was explaining you, you put this up into someone's chest or into someone's, I guess, their intestines and their lungs, and then you like mash up their, 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 their guts and then this it hooks the machine and this sucks out their their mushed up guts it says like an attachment that helps you mush things up in there so it like siphons out the inside of the body so a fascinating piece of uh of funeral equipment there also a funeral flag this would be on a uh on a hearse headed to a funeral, this apparently attaches to the bumper of the hearse. And we'll see if we can get that attached uh, to the car here. And uh, it's right here, look at this. A bottle of embalming fluid. Some uh, Sertan there. This is the embalmer supply company there on the back. So very generous gift. You know, I was talking to I was talking to, to, to Todd, just kind of telling him, you know, maybe someday I'd like to like to have my own museum. It's kind of a pipe dream. Like, you know, once I'm done traveling, I think it'd be great to have my own my own attraction, my own uh, small museum. But you know, that those are just dreams right now. Hopefully, maybe someday they can uh, they can come together. But uh, thank you guys so much for uh, joining me here on uh, this tour of the Anatomy of Death Museum. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country from roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more. We'll get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. Uh, we have four different carpetbagger cryptid pins also doing cameos personalized messages greetings birthdays anniversaries just for fun if you're interested in that check out the description of this video and all that helps keep this train on the track this boat in the water and this skeleton climbing up the side of your home till next time my friends <laughs> this in the bag.